shooting. Yeah, I want to see if he can't get a couple of extra shots on that. He's also just playing for the camera right now. Wishing everyone who is still floating in the air a little bit of good luck because, well, when you face down Shroud, you are going to need it. What's better than being blown some kisses from Shroud, Cameron? I mean, honestly, I do not know. He also, uh, also threw some waves at us. I like that. I like that. But this is certainly one of the more popular area's ruins. Yeah. They're going to have this all to themselves, which is very significant given that it is really not tailored. It's really not set in terms of loot for one particular squad. So they're going to be able to get so much out of this building. I'm looking at the minimap right now, looks like very few teams. No one challenging Doc and Deadmau5 there in Paradise Resort. Very few people all intermingled. They have a couple of squads in similar areas, but no one has gotten mixed up. No one going for the exact same spot. So we may not have some immediate action in the same way that we saw it last game, but at the size of the map that Sanok is, shots are going to ring out. You can see a couple there from Ammunition Squad up there. Once again on the low Lexi. They can't avoid each other, can they? This is the exact two squads that fought in the early game of last map. Yeah, these guys are very close to one another. Little Lexi squad almost pinched in between not just that squad as well, but also Chad and Trick2G just to the north. So a very tough spot for them to rotate out of, but certainly they're going to be leaning on the advice of their two evil geniuses, pro PUBG players, to sort of get them out of this sticky situation. Cameron, the first circle has popped, and it mm -hmm. will be showing us exactly where the play zone will be. And I guess for the most part, not a bad circle. No, not really. It is not center, obviously, but it's pretty center compared to where most people like to go. We talked about in the solos, the large island is the more, more favorable one because it allows, it's a greater chance of being inside the circle into the late game. But that's, and so this circle is going to center on that island, which is going to be very useful. No one is up on the northwest island, which is good because, well, it's actually the worst island looking at this next circle. Yeah, absolutely. Here we see team number 14, Team Smack. Going to be looting through this area, making a bit of a transition to the next compound to continue on with that looting phase. Around the map, though, Cameron, fairly spread out, like you were mentioning, for the time being. But we know that that is soon to change. Yeah, Shroud, these guys, they're going to have to move soon. They are inside the circle, but the chances that their position is going to be inside the next circle is not that great. And so they're going to want to use this opportunity right now, considering they don't have to fight anyone for their loot, to loot up as much as they can. And there's a fair bit of loot around this area. Uh, and then try and get a more central position. Not bomb dead center, because by doing that, they're going to have to go through a couple of other teams. But, ah, here it is. Smack found the VSS. He found his weapon. Yeah, he did. Like magnets, that beautiful VSS is in the hands of Smack. And we talked about the advantages of the VSS specifically on this map. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very interested to see if Smack and the rest of the crew who utilize those VSSs can really exhibit what we were talking about, Cameron. He's a little low on meds. But I'm a little worried about that. But they're still going to be continuing their loot. They're going on a little more of what we call like a trash loot style, which is standard for Sanok, but it's... It's more standard, I should say, but it's not exactly in the middle of a city. So they're going to have to leapfrog from one small compound to the next. Staying as four together, it looks like, is what they're doing uh, to support each other and kind of pass loot around. Choco Choco and his squad doing a similar thing up on the northern side, just south of Mongai. Yeah, south of Mongai, riding the northern edge of the circle. But shots now coming out on a Trick 2G squad as Cuddy connects on to Cookie Man. This is going to be from, ooh, that's actually Chad that got the shots on to Cookie Man. Team number four, Team Chad being a very big thorn in the side of Trick 2G here in the quarry. Yeah, and this is why quarry is so dangerous. Very little cover for Cookie right there. And then Team Chad, they just snuck up onto their position, find some easy shots, an easy kill. The chances of a revive coming through on that player onto Cookie is very, very slim. I'd be surprised if Trick and the rest of his team even went for it. It looks like they're just going to be chilling out in this little corner, try and take some return shots of their own. But Cerberus, he finds a nice little angle, could land a couple of shots. Long range, a little bit ambitious but it puts pressure on them nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, it's tough for Trick2G squad right now because they're trying to peek the angles, trying to see if there's any way at all that they can get Cookie Man out of this very difficult situation. And then doing that, they're presenting themselves to the other players of Team Chad. So a very tough spot for Trick2G. We can see he's got the QBZ. He's got the extended mag in there. Hardly any meds to his name, but he's going to be hopping in that U.S. and getting out of dodge. And this is a smart play to be Ooh, making here, Cameron. Oh, he tried to find the UAZ, pulling it back to his teammates, but by doing so, he gave his position away to Team Gold Glove up on the north, and they are trying to chase him down. A little bit of damage onto him, a little bit of damage onto the vehicle, but nothing too bad. Wait, He's Trick, your teammates. Your teammates, Trick, they're he, back he there. Can't, he can't wait. He can't stop. 
No, you can't stop. Sometimes you got to leave. Sometimes you got to say it's not safe, boys. But that is going to be uh, that's gonna be an already third-party action coming out. And Chad finishing off Cookie Man going to leave Trick 2G and the rest of their squad with only three members to push on here in game number three. This is a nice pickup for Team Smack. Solid grabbing the level three helmet. I wonder what gun was inside. I don't think we had a chance to spot it real quick. Quick, but can we see it on someone's back? That's going to be the Groza. What? It doesn't matter what gun's in that crate. We know these guys are using VSSs. Come on. We know Smack's using a VSS. I don't think anyone else had the opportunity to find one. Back down on Trick's team, though. Rexy taking a lot of damage in the crossfire set up by Gold Glove. But look on the minimap. Gold Glove, Jericho, Diesel, everyone, they're pushing in on the Trick's position. Yeah, Gold Glove going to be knocked and bleeding out right now as they try to figure out are they going to be able to get their team captain back up. Certainly he is telling them safe res, safe res, safe res. But we will find out if it is actually going to be safe. Rexy, meanwhile, going to be inside of the building just trying to peek these angles, see where the threats are presenting themselves. And this is a very smart move given the fact that he is separated from the rest of his squad. Look at all this third, fourth, and fifth party action. Looking on the map on the right side, you can see how many teams are hearing this action trying to chase them down. It looks like Justin from Team Luzu actually gets a down onto Horsey. So now it's just Rexy and Trick left, and we saw they are separated from each other. This is a bad position. Trick takes more damage. Mm. <laughs> it's just a very tough spot for these guys to be in. Every team, at least in this centralized area or where these teams are trying to rotate out of, uh, they're surrounded uh, by uh, multiple squads. Oh, uh, guys, you can't see Trick. He's lining up the shot. He wants to make sure that he has a clean finish on Come both on. of these guys if he takes a shot. But if they just walk past, he's going to let them. Oh, no, he's going for the shot. Let it rip, Trick, able to find the connection onto Chad right there. The captain of Team Chad going to be going down and out as Trick gets knocked behind the rock, trying to hide, trying to not get shot anymore, possibly going to make the opportunity for another teammate to come in. His only remaining teammate, Rexy, to come get that res. But it is going to be a tough one at that, as we do have a player number 28 trying to rotate out. Cuddy trying to rotate in to get a res, taking a lot of damage in the process. Drop down of about 10% HP. But the push of Team Gold Glove is going to find frags of its own. Onto Chad's team, already grabbing one. In fact, now it's just Event 28 left alive. He's got to find his own way out of this. Reses for him are looking pretty, pretty bad. Jericho takes point, actually shooting now at the Team Luzu. It's a big, giant brawl here between multiple teams. Yeah, a huge, giant brawl. Gold Glove able to be rezzed by his teammate. A very significant res for this team, but they're going to be hiding up here in this bit of a little sniper tower. It gives you great vantage on the surrounding areas, but it is extremely hard to get out of. You either have to vault, yeah. which puts you in the very vulnerable animation, or you have to run down the stairs, revealing your body entirely to shots. Yeah, it's a commitment is the point. Yeah, it's a commitment, Cameron, and we see them making that commitment right now. Diesel going to be looking up. Meanwhile, his teammate is popping those meds, but over here, Smack has got that VSS out. This is a good line of sight to be popping out these nine mil shots. Will he start to take these, Cameron? Jericho finishing off what Trick 2G started and takes out Team Chad, or the first team out of this. VS yes, Max looking around, unable to find any connection to the VSS just yet. But don't worry, we have more action ahead of us as the circle shrinks smaller and smaller. Here right now is going to be little Lexi on the eastern side, currently looting up Cam Pong. Yeah, all four alive for them, excellent to see. Blue Zone will be pushing in on circle number two in just a matter of moments. And it looks like team number three, it's going to be Ashley's squad pulling up on to Smack's team, team number 14. So these guys are a little bit separated, but certainly close enough to have an engagement pop off as well. Look, Cameron, look at Ammunition's team right next to this. Yeah, everyone's all close together right now. A couple of shots immediately ringing out. Ammunition going on the aggressive. Wants to find these connections, wants to find these headshots. Wiki took some damage, wanted to duck behind. Waiting for his team to regroup back onto him. Cameron, I just got word from production that Ludacris has subbed out from Shroud's team, and it will be his protege, Childish. Yeah, so let's see if that can't make a better Childish, Childish Major. Childish, Childish Major is going to be subbing in for Ludacris right now. So we're going to see. Mm -hmm. Is something different going to be able to come out from these guys? Uh, you know, I don't know. Certainly Shroud is a great captain to yeah. be taking these guys through the games. It's a nice curveball. Everyone could be prepared to play against Shroud when he has Ludacris. But oh, no, surprise fourth player com could completely change the dynamic of the team throw all these plans of these attacking teams onto them into turmoil. But right now, it is still ammunition keeping Team Vis pinned down. Already got a kill, already got a full frag. Yakuza, though, taking a lot of damage in turn. Going to the duck and weave is going to avoid any more damage down to 50. Going to heal up after that. But Garrett 9000, the rest of his team still trying to find these connections. Miss the headshot. Watch the peak from the opposite side. Don't over-peak yourself. 
Garrett just holding on to these angles, trying to spot out ahead. Yak is not going to be giving them that opportunity. Ooh, slides out of the left side of the tree. A few shots going out from Garrett. He's just going to continue to peek these angles, pre-fire it, see if he gets a lucky connection onto one of the members from Ammunition Squad. But with this, will Garrett be able to get out of here if they full-on rush this building, Cameron? Well, they're going to want to find a connection first before they do so because it's a clean path down that hill. What I'm worried about is the ammunition is getting third party from the eastern side, but the damage is still coming through. So far, no one's punishing this commitment by ammunition, keeping Team Vis pinned down. Vis looking worse for wear right now. Garrett took a little bit of damage. They're just losing more and more meds. Right now, though, we're going to be looking over who is this. This is going to be Shroud's team coming up against Anthony K. Yeah, Anthony, Kong Fan, and the rest of the squad. Number two, going to be just close to Shroud and the rest of their team. The next circle has popped. Circle number three has presented itself. And where will our players be going? Over to the east, Cameron. Yeah, so both these teams right now on our screen, they're going to have to take care of each other before they cross this water. Crossing water is very risky, whether you actually swim across or go across the bridge. And so if Anthony's team is not aware of the presence of Shroud and they cross the river without knowing, Shroud could easily punish them. It looks like that may be the case right now. Is Shroud going to have an opportunity, him and the rest of his team, to take out some opposing players? Certainly this is exactly what they want to find. You know that Shroud does not shy away from combat at all, fully confident in his skills to frag out, and that is exactly what I think we're about to see popping off. Mm. It looks like a lot of kills, though, in our kill feed as Team Number 9 that's going to be Gold Glove Squad, as well as Team Number 11 Loser Squad and Vicious Squad are all fully engaged in these, in in these battles, Cameron. Yeah, there are two major fights happening right now. It's going to be Vis is one of them. He's actually getting pushed on by Team Smack as well as being continued to be pinned down by Ammunition. So it's a three-way three fight right now. This is down to two, but Team Smack is only down to one as iDev gets dropped. Could get revived still, but it's still a really bad position. Looks like Smack may not want to go for the revive right now. It may not be a good choice for him. He may just want to retreat at this point. But Vis, he's going on a retreat of his own. Stutter has been picked up and is just along his side. Ammunition. Their position is way too strong for them right now. And you don't want to have to push through them to get inside the circle. They're going to make a decision to loop south and loop around. But by doing so, they may be walking directly into Nothing's team. But yeah. Smack, though, finds a kill with the BSS. Hello, ammunition. Down and out. We were waiting for it, Cameron, and there is Smack, tried and true, going to be popping off with the BSS, and here he goes again, trying to get a double kill, spotting out more of Ammunition Squad, trying to wrap around the corner, but it's going to be Yakis who ends up spotting out Smack, taking him down and out with the AKM. Good aggressive play there from Yakis to ruin Smack's dream of getting more than one kill, but he got one. That's more than I think any of us can say that we can do with that. Uh, almost two. weapon. Almost, almost two. two. Almost yeah. two. So a very good push from Smack right there. Unfortunately, did not end the way that he had hoped. Meanwhile, though, looks like Shroud Squad's having a bit of difficulty here as they're being engaged on by Anthony Kongpan. Yeah, it looks like they didn't see Anthony's team cross the water. In fact, Shroud, they went down towards the bridge, but now they both crossed that river. They're in a fight against each other, and Shroud has taken a lot of casualties. Shroud's out, learns out. D. Rich has been finished off. It's all to event 29. He's trying to find a place to hide, trying to find a place to get a revive on his teammates. I think this is Childish Major. This is the sub in for Ludacris right now, it just is. trying to survive, trying to really pull out for his team right now. You know that Shroud is giving him some advice under the bridge. He's safe for the time being, but will Shroud be able to guide Childish Major out of this sticky situation, Cameron? Here's the real test of being a good captain. He's trying to play from the backseat, but the Blues overtaking him, and Drassel holding the angle punishes the late retreat by Childish. And so that's going to be Shroud squad out in 13th place. Out in 13th place. Certainly a confidence booster for Anthony Kongfan and the rest of their squad as they continue to push in here in game number three. 12 teams remaining, 40 players alive, Cameron, and just 14 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, and action has been popping off left and right. Here we get Giant Waffle. They didn't show us a lot last game. I believe they got taken out by Shroud early on, but now they're going up against Chaco's team. Chaco, though, in the middle of a fight with another team, is going to be Dock and Deadmau5. Finding two, but can't get more than that. But here comes Boomzy also dropping Deadmau5. I believe there's only one member left from Dock's squad. It's just the Dock himself, and he gets taken out by Boomzy. Chaco Taco and the rest of his team making it very quick work of team number seven. Boogie was the first, I guess the first casualty of that engagement, mm -hmm. and it just really went downhill from there. But certainly Boomzy and the rest of Chaco's squad are going to be very happy. Chaco, though, lost in the engagement, so they will be working with only three players as they continue on. It's really good, though, that they're able to get that engagement over and done with quickly because here comes Waffle pushing down onto them. 35 seconds where the blue closes. Neither of these two squads is inside the next safe zone. And so they're going to have to take care of this fight quickly. But Chaco's squad, what remains of it, do have a good position to keep a gatekeep. Luki off the side, landing a couple of shots, but takes a lot in return. He does get finished off. 
gets it down by Technostar, but Destiny's Chicken able to get the trade. Yep, this is going to be giant Waffle Squad right here trying to do whatever they can. Binan's going to be wiped out as well, leaving just Waffle and Averiliz left as the only remaining players alive. Will they be able to get the res? Will they engage onto this squad and try to wipe them out and clear out the clear out the battle? I don't know. Destiny's Chicken's going to be creeping up now, trying to get closer and closer using these trees as this cover. They do have to worry about the third party potential by Team Luzu. You're going to see a couple of shots from them up to that position. So both of these squads to worry that they don't overcommit onto each other. May one just cut their losses in the retreat, but a nice little tap down by Drassel onto Ashy Bears. But back on Destiny's Chicken, he's trying to punish the run from the blue, but he's got to worry about the blue himself. Taking some shots in through the shrubbery. Doesn't land too many connections, and instead it just pushes them towards the east, but it also does stop any revives. Absolutely. We see one member of Chaco's squad, Boomsy, going to be rotating in, securing the circle position for his team. Yeah. Meanwhile, Destiny's Chicken is going to start that rotation himself after taking a few more pushback shots on to that squad. Here comes Anthony Conkman and the rest of team number two as they push into Dizzy Kitten's squad. And Dizzy Kitten already knocked. That's going to be one of their other teammates going down as well. Just Alaric left inside of this compound. Yeah, a fight against the duo remaining from Viz's team puts Dizzy Kitten's squad down in a very bad position. Drassel, though, he wants more. He wants in. He already has three kills, but that's not enough for him. And he wants to take care of Viz. Viz's remaining teammate of Stutter. He's going to push up aggressively, aggressively up the hill. Viz is trying to redirect his own angle, though. Ooh, Drassel trying to land these shots, able to connect with the M416 on a stutter, gets the kill on the Ashy Bears as well. So two different squads that Drassel is fully engaged on. Drassel's such an outstanding player. He's throwing out the frags, just putting out whatever pressure in front of him that he can. You like to see this, Cameron. He knows there's one player left in Viss, but he doesn't know where Viss is. Viss is on the right side. Drassel expects him over the rock, but Viss taking the shots out, doesn't land too many connections though, and instead just gives his own position away. He's got to go up against three. Drassel swinging around the side, does get the final connection. That's going to be Team Viss out in ninth place. Drassel Russell, you absolute beast. Six kills to his name already here in game number three. Cameron, he is shining and uh, doing some pretty good things here. They are running from the blue, and so they had no time to mm -hmm. waste. It was a very aggressive maneuver, but it was necessary to get into the next zone safely. Absolutely. And here comes our next circle, Cameron. It has shifted us a little down to the southeast of our central point of our circle number four. But for the most part, I think team number one, the remaining members of Ammunition's team, going to be very happy with their position. Remaining, and that's the crucial part. There's only two of them, so they're going to need to do a lot of work controlling their angles, and I'm sure Drassel is not done pushing forward aggressively. No, he certainly is not, Cameron. Eight teams remaining, 21 players alive, and it is so hard to hold a central point in a circle as two players. So many different angles to watch, and you really have to communicate effectively to guard those approaches. But here comes Drassel, the rest of the dangerous squad of Anthony Kong fan, pushing on to this compound. I wonder if you and Nyak is both teammates playing together for a long time before now, if they're going to be able to deal. They are giving Team Anthony this eastern side. They are aware that they only have two players. They don't want to overcommit their reach. They could get an easy shot. It's not going to land. And now it does tell Anthony's squad that there are neighbors right next to them. And Nate, though, is going to make his way through the window, I believe. Quickly, the players trying to avoid this damage. You saw them spread out immediately. More damage, though, coming in, connecting on to Ewan. Meanwhile, though, team number eight, this is going to be Giant Waffle Squad, or what remains of that squad, trying to push through, finding beautiful connections onto Luzu's squad. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what they need to do. Eight teams remaining, 20 players alive, just trying to make your way inside of the zone. A lot of punishing coming through. In fact, unfortunately, Giant Waffle, they're not going to make it any further because Wolf had the angle on the final two members. The blue was too much for them to deal with, had no choice but to push directly in. And, well, you can see just how hard it can be sometimes when you're not able to define the pacing yourself. Yeah, just to let you guys at home know, player number 52 on this squad is actually Kevin Smith. So make sure to take note of that going on in the games. He will be bleeding out right now. Drassel with six kills to his name. Dian Boom with one kill to his name. Will they be sending out Anthony to try to get the res, or is it too risky? The question is, though, does this is this squad aware that there could be people attacking from the south? They don't want to be so committed on the remaining members of ammunition that they ignore their backside. But Ewan. Ewan. Woo! Nice that shot, shot, Cameron. Nice headshot on to Boom. It's going to deal more damage. And I believe there's actually three bleeding out from Team Anthony right now. Yes, I believe it's just one player left for that squad, trying to do whatever he can. Drassel inside of this building. He's got to do something here. You don't want to be pushing into the late game as a solo player, but Drassel is certainly a capable player if he has to do that. Anthony going to be res. They're trying to stick the res on the boom. Drassel dropped very low, trying to rotate out of this position, just hiding from the angles. 
Here comes attacks from multiple teams, and right now it's going to be Team Ashik doing a lot of damage, stopping the revive. Gosso didn't to take it out just yet. But here comes Boomzy in as well, trying to toss out an A. Doesn't find a connection itself, but it does mean that he can continue to push in. Wants to find a little bit of a shack for himself. Is aware of Ashik, takes a lot of damage, deals it to the English Adam, and finishes off as well. No trade out, but it's actually going to be another player. Ewan up on the north there may have wanted to commit in onto that, but he is the last one left because he did lose Yakas, his only other teammate. So he doesn't want to overcommit onto this, just wants to hold his building as long as he can as the remaining solo from Team Ammunition. Exactly. You and HC with another beautiful Car 98 connection onto Luzu Games right there, wiping out Team Luzu in sixth place, leaving us with just five teams remaining, 11 players alive. And a lot of these teams have not been able to make it here to the late game with all four alive. Cameron, the numbers are hurting, the casualties have been taken. And it's only a matter of time before we find out who our first place winner of the chicken dinners for game number three is going to be. You can see how frantic Ewan is right now, trying to run around. He has to check so many angles to keep control, but he is a solo player by himself. Ewan can't land the shot, but a nice attempt nonetheless. He's going to go for it a second time, waiting for the peak onto the left side. Little Lexi squad, pretty much the only team, I'm pretty sure, Cameron, the Ooh. only team with four players alive. But UNHC continues to rain down shots with his car 98, finding his connection this time onto Wolf. Retreating back inside, hiding from these different lines of sight that will be presented from him up on that hill. He just needs to continue to put out pressure to avoid people from crashing in on his compound if he wants to try to make it in to the final placements. And look at the next zone. It is immediately on this compound. So the players who are not inside have a very difficult path in front of them. Anthony tried to push in on Ash. But Ashik holding the shack is going to have the corner, but Boomsy is aware of his position as well. But Yuren peeking around the side, going aggressive, getting the spray on to Boomsy before he pops right back inside. Is it going to get traded on, though? Yeah, we will have to wait and see. Yuen is not afraid to peek outside, though, and take these shots. He is not going to be confined to this house, and that just shows how strong of a player he is. Able to pop these meds off. Now he's going to try to re-engage on the remaining players around the map. Still five teams remaining. Eight players alive, though, as team number 10. This is going to be Lil Lexi squad rotating around the circle, the edge, trying to find some of these shots. Yuen trying to find an angle now while he can before the blue finishes itself and it's going to be on the opposite building it's going to be on the building that anthony's team used to hold but here comes the push by a little lexi squad ashik though dealing dealing with them doing a lot of work nomi is going to get picked up it's just wolf and another player left on that team but still has three though can still do a lot of work absolutely he can he's got that vector and we talked about cameron how powerful the vector is specifically on Sanox. So whether or not he can come up clutch with it, we will have to wait and see. But Lil Lexi squad will be only working with three members. I believe they still likely have the numbers advantage here. Four teams, six players alive. And Ashik still trying to come out with a commanding finish for his squad. Tries to peek out the window. Takes about 60% damage in the process and has to retreat back to safety. He has a fair bit of meds. But Ewan also taking a lot of damage himself. And he's going to have to cross the road soon. It's not looking good for him right now. He is hoping that... Oh! He's hoping that he's not spotted, but Wolf is going to finish him off. Destiny's Chicken, though, also finish off Ashik. So now we're just having two teams left. Two teams remaining. A 1v3 situation, I believe it is. And that is going to be Evil Genius's Nomi coming out with a huge kill to finish out the game. Team number 10, Lil Lexi Squad, first place in game number three, Cameron. Only six kills. We've seen a lot more. In fact, looking at second place.